Yahweh's design and plan for the home is the best. There is none that compares. The only question is, do we understand it? Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10-Minute Torah, Day 3, the Torah portion of Barry's Sheet. And we are going to enter into a little bit of a controversial topic. And Barry's Sheet of Genesis chapter number 2, it says that in verse 20, So the man gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field, but for the man there was not found a helper for him as his counterpart. So Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall on the man, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed the flesh in its place. And the rib with which Yahweh had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one is called woman because she was taken out of a man or out of man. So as I mentioned yesterday, in Yah's created order and design, he created, to the best of our understanding, uh, all of humankind, all of mankind attributes into one human being. And then, as we have just read, he separated that which is feminine from that which is masculine. So he took the entirety of mankind and made two parts. Again, one more time, everything that is masculine comes from Yah. Everything that is feminine also comes from Yah, and equally so. So is Yah masculine or feminine? Neither. Yah is spirit. But the qualities, the characteristics, the roles of these two types, masculine and feminine, originate with him. He is indeed the creator. Now, we see in scripture and in most writings that Yah is referred to with a masculine pronoun. He is identified as Yah, our father. He has granted to us a revelation of himself, his right arm of redemption and deliverance as Yeshua, the son of Yah. So we have this masculine identity and revelation. That is not to say, however, that that which is feminine does not originate from him because it does. In our world currently, there is mass confusion about gender. shouldn't be. It's very, very simple. You're either a man or a woman. There are no other choices. You're one or the other. Uh, I understand that there can be some physical mutations that take place in an embryo, and that's an extremely rare, extremely rare situation. But... For the most part, we are either male or female, masculine or feminine. And we each in our identity as such have particular roles to play. By that, I do not mean man goes out and does heavy hands-on work and woman stays home and keeps the house. And um, a man should never do woman's work and women should not do men's work. Uh, it's it's amazing how we can take the roles and identities that Yah has granted to us and bring into them confusion, not just in which gender we are, but what he intends for us to do and what our roles are as far as his design. There has been teaching over the last several, several years that would elevate a woman's role, the feminine role, to be above that of the man's role. And so there has been, as a response, um, some in the Hebraic roots community, uh, especially among the women, to rise up and say, well, we're supposed to be in charge. And um, there has been a lot of hurt 
and a lot of confusion and a lot of mistrust and anger and relational disruption because of this idea. What is the role here? What is it that Yah is trying to do? Yah gave to Adam, as he contained both identities, an opportunity to find, likewise, in the animal kingdom, a counterpart. There was nothing like Adam to, to relate to. And so Yah took from Adam that which was of himself and separated the two so that when they come back together, that is, in their intimate union, they are functioning at their highest level and that they are most like Elohim in that opportunity. To fully reflect the face of Yah as was given to us in the first chapter, Verse 26, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. That was that both male and female that originates with Yah was found in one being. Separated, now they have separate roles to play, separate identities to reveal, separate parts of Yah to to reveal to one another. But when we come together, what the world has made a very debauched, sensuous, uh, even uh, perverted and dirty thing is actually a beautiful union by which Yah's glorious face is revealed to a set-apart couple. That's his design. That's the way it's supposed to work. Each of us have qualities and abilities that we know that we can develop and accentuate for the benefit of our partner and for our resulting families. And so we play the roles and the qualities that we have been given. Some are very aggressive. Some are somewhat passive. Some are uh, more of a positive outlook. Some have more of a negative outlook. We, we all have our, our identities and those distinctions, those very unique aspects of our character. But Yah puts us together so that what one lacks, the other would, would accentuate and, and have the ability to compensate for and vice versa. So that when we work together, however we choose to work together, that there is a sense of completeness and wholeness between us. You can't really just put a narrow definition of what it means to be a man and shove every male person into that and then say, this is what a woman's supposed to be and shove all the lady folk in there and constrict us to what are considered cultural norms or uh, preferred roles to play. It doesn't work that way. The idea between a man and his wife, a woman and her husband, is that they learned to relate and walk together in such fashion as that they reveal the glorious face of Yah between them. Not only in their times of intimacy, but in their public working together, in the way that they raise their children, in the way that they build and establish their homes. Yah enables us to rightly reflect Him, and we need to seize that opportunity. So one other quick point here. When Hasatan, the serpent, tempted the couple, he approached first the woman. And out of that, because the woman acquiesced to his argument first, then her husband, one would say, well, she's the weaker sex because she gave in first. But there's another way of looking at that. And that is that the serpent, appealed to the woman because of the quality of nurturing that resided in her. It could be then that Chava, commonly called Eve, was a caregiver, a nurturer, one wanting to supply the the need of their home and saw what was revealed to her not only as something to make her wise to help her husband, but also to simply feed him, however it appealed to her. It wasn't because she was a woman. It was because of something that 
the serpent saw as a quality to be exploited. Unfortunately, both failed. Think on that. We'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, shalom.